رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد النبي الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Welcome again to the stories of the prophets peace be upon them I am in the middle of the story of Ibrahim, Abraham, peace be upon him and I've told you that he was born in the city of Babylon, northern Iraq. They worshipped statues that they built themselves and they worshipped their king. And one day, Ibrahim alayhi salam, when they were outside on a festival, destroyed all of their idols. And when they came back, they discovered that and they found out that Ibrahim did it. So they decided to throw him into a blazing fire. So they dug a pit, huge hole into the ground, put the, uh, the wood into it until it became like a big building. And then they took a machine that throws stones and they tied Ibrahim's hands and feet and put him into that machine. And the decision of the leaders were given to throw him into the fire. In a saying of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that the angel Jibreel, Gabriel, peace be upon him, came to Ibrahim at that moment during the flight. He was now flying to be thrown into the fire. And he said, oh Ibrahim, do you wish for anything? And Ibrahim, alayhi salam, replied, nothing from you only from Allah. This is, this is something that we must always remember. Even angels cannot help us. It is only with the will of Allah. And he said at that moment, Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said, about these words, Hasbi Allah wa ni'mal wakil. For us, God is enough and He is the best disposer of all affairs. The Prophet said these words were mentioned by Ibrahim while he was thrown into the fire, and he, it is mentioned by Muhammad when he was told that the uh, people of Mecca are attacking him. I do not depend on myself. I do not depend on my companions. I do not depend on my plans. God is enough for me and he decides what happens. In another narration, it is related that the angel of rain asked permission from Allah to pour rain to distinguish the fire of Ibrahim. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not give him that permission because he has already given another order. This is in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O oh fire, become cool and safe for Ibrahim. So, they sent him into the fire and he was shot and he fell into the fire. The moment he fell, there was no heat. It was like a cool garden. Flames were still there. The wood was still burning. Fire was huge around him. It only burned the rope around his arms and his feet. But other than that, it did not touch him in any way. See, we must understand something. Nothing, nothing has power by itself. Fire does not have power by itself. It is only the power that God gives it. A knife doesn't have a power by itself. It does not cut except by the will of Allah. No one, nothing has a power by itself. So if we understand this, then if he has given the power, he can take it away. And he has taken 
the power of the fire to burn. Allah Almighty left Ibrahim السلام, in the fire with no fear, no anxiety, no worry. It was just peace as ordered. It was safe and cool. And Ibrahim was in the middle of a miracle. So he was overwhelmed by faith with love and belief that God, Allah Almighty, will protect him. And that faith saved him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was very pleased with Ibrahim that he would do anything for the sake of Allah, even sacrifice himself, take a dangerous act like destroying the statues just for the sake of Allah. Ibn Abbas, one of the great companions of the Prophet, said that if the command of Allah to the fire was not only become cool, but it was said become cool and safe. And with that, Ibrahim was not only feeling the cool of the fire, but also he was not harmed. When he fell down, he was not harmed. Ibrahim was told to, said, to say later on that one of my greatest times, my, one of my best times on earth was the time I spent inside the fire. So, if we understand this, we shall not fear anyone. No power, no government, no bombs will make us afraid. They have nuclear bombs. We have Allah with us. If you understand this principle, then your whole mentality shall change. This whole life is very short. What counts is the day of judgment and what happens after that. This life is what, 60, 70, 100 years? What does it compare to the hereafter? So, if you truly, truly believe in God, then you sacrifice. If Allah wants you to be martyred, then you will. If Allah wants you to live, then nobody can harm you, no matter what they do. And that is the principle that the, the Prophet taught to his companions. And that's why in every battle they went into, they never ran away. What could others do to us? Now, Ibrahim السلام, was inside the fire. And for the first moment, the people of uh, Babylon was joyous. They, they killed and burned the one who destroyed their gods. They revenged for their gods. And now we will show anyone that might think about touching our gods in the future. But now, suddenly, when they started to look into the fire, some people realized that there was something inside the fire. So they started to point. And everyone looked. And suddenly they could realize that Ibrahim was sitting inside the fire. A miracle is happening in front of their eyes. Ibrahim's people were taken aback. The chiefs, the priests, sat watching the fire from a safe distance. It was burning so strongly, so strongly it was a flame. And this man is sitting inside it. What is this? And everyone was totally astonished. They should, have, they should have believed. His God has saved him. Well, you could not save your God. They, they, your God could not save themselves. And the miracle continued. People looked. And they saw Ibrahim enjoying this fire around him, sitting in peace, laughing. 
no, no, nothing is touching him. And the cries of astonishment were heard from everywhere. Look, look, a miracle is happening in front of you. What do you want more than this? But this, despite this miracle, despite, despite this miracle, no one believed except Lot, his nephew, Lot. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, but Lot had faith in him. Everyone else in the kingdom of Babylon at that time, even those who witnessed their Id idols being destroyed and those who witnessed Ibrahim inside the fire untouched, they remained unbelievers in the true religion of God and they said this is witchcraft this is witchcraft so Ibrahim came out of the fire untouched and everyone was scared of him the news spread so quickly until it reached the king that they worship many sayings they mentioned the name of Namrud as the name of that king when the story reached Namrud he said, bring him to me. And he was taken to the king. Now the king asked and asked and everyone would witness this man sat inside the fire and was not touched. So he brought him to his palace and everyone in the palace was watching. And the discussion now between Ibrahim alayhi salam and the king of Babylon started. Now, the, the first miracle, the miracle of the fire was witnessed by the common people. Now he's talking to the king in the palace of the king. The king said to him, who is your lord? You worship anyone but me and the idols? And he said, yes, I worship the one that gives lives and takes lives. The king said, I give life and I take life. So he ordered two prisoners from the jail. And he said to his guards, this one, free him. This one, kill him. And they did. So he said, look, I gave life to this one. I killed the other one. I took the life of the other one. I give life and take life. Of course, uh, Ibrahim السلام, and everyone else realized that this, was, this discussion was going into the wrong way. Ibrahim did not mean it that way. He, he's talking about giving the original life. He gives life originally. But the king is taking it into a wrong direction. And Ibrahim السلام, knew how to discuss. When you see that a uh, discussion in going in the, into a wrong discussion, then do not continue with that discussion into that direction. Take it back to the original path. So he said, instead of continuing with the discussion of life and death, and he could have won it, but that would take a longer discussion, Ibrahim said, my God, causes the sun to rise from the east. Can you cause it to rise from the west? And the arrogant king was taken aback. Of course, he could not. But still he did not believe. See, some people, we bring them the truth. We show them the truth. I remember I had a discussion with some of my Christian friends. And I said to them, see, the difference between Christianity and Islam, the major difference is one thing. You believe that Jesus is 
the Son of God? We don't. They said, yes. I said to them, what proof do you have that he is the Son of God? They said, the Bible. So I said to them, what if I prove to you that the Bible has contradictions in it? And thus, you cannot, you cannot trust it as a source of knowledge, true knowledge. They said, no, the Bible is the truth. I said, what if? What if I can prove to you that there are clear contradictions in the Bible? How could it be the truth if it has contradictions? They refused to listen. I would listen to anyone who would say to me, the Quran has contradictions. And I will look and think and study and ask. And if it does, then it is not the truth. But these people refused even to listen. So this man was given the truth. A discussion between Namrud, the king, and Ibrahim salam, proved to the king that he is on the wrong path. He, it proved to everyone around him that he is not God. He, he cannot control heavens and earth. He cannot change the movement of the sun or the earth. But still none of them believed. Instead, instead of continuing the discussion to reach the truth, the king gave the order that Ibrahim should leave Iraq. He cannot continue in this city. Why didn't he kill him? See, the king was smart. See, they tried to kill him before, and a miracle happened. Now, if he tried to kill him again, and another miracles, a miracle happens, then that would be the end of it. And everyone would believe in Ibrahim, instead of continuing to worship the king. And thus, he would not even try to kill him. The best way is to get rid of him. And that was the order for Ibrahim to leave Iraq. And he was pushed into the desert in the direction of Palestine. Ibrahim salam said, I am going to my Lord. My Lord is everywhere. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be worshipped everywhere. God is not everywhere. God, God is not in every... This is one of the principles of Islam. God is not everywhere. God is above us, above all heavens and earth. And that is why we turn to him by asking him and turning up. He's always up there. But we can worship him anywhere, everywhere. So Ibrahim left and migrated to Palestine and uh, Syria. And he went into the direction of Harran, the city in Syria today. He took with him his nephew, Lut, and later on he was joined by his wife, Sarah. Now, the story of Ibrahim in Iraq has ended. Unfortunately, nobody believed, except Lut and then later on, Sarah, his wife. Everyone else even his own family, even the ones that witnessed the miracle, none of them believed. And this gives us a message that guiding people to the truth is in our hands, but making them believers is not in our hands. I can guide them, I can show them the truth, I can give them a message, I can talk to them, I can do TV programs, send brochures, whatever. Yes, you can send the message, show them the message, show them the truth. But whether they believe or not, it is not in your hands. So it is our duty to worship Allah and to call others to the message of Allah. But it is not our duty to make them believers. It is up to Allah and up to them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, فَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيُؤْمِنْ وَمَنْ شَاءَ فَلْيَكْفُرْ 
let anyone who wishes be a believer and let anyone who wishes be a disbeliever. So now a new story, the story of Ibrahim in Syria and his story with the worshippers of the planets and the stars is our next story inshallah. Thank you for listening. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Thank you.